Imagine if you were forced to attend a religious or religion approved school seven hours a day, more or less five days a week, and on aggregate about seven months a year. At this religious school they would teach you writing, math, and science, but they would also teach you religion. Would you expect the person who came out of this education to believe in God? Of course you would. I'm sure you could have some debates on this or that verse of the Bible and debates about the extent of God. You would have biblical extremists and literalists and people who had more, a more moderate view of God that didn't take the Bible too literally or even not taking the Bible as true at all. But they would all agree on the existence of a God. Why no evidence of this God today? Well, the answer is that the age of miracles has passed. Ignoring that those who proclaimed these miracles had and have everything to gain from expanding church power. The very existence of churchmen is only possible if people believe in God. The more biblical, the better. And these graduates of the school will certainly be civil on debates about gods, or most will at least, and many will even stress interfaith relations. But as soon as you question the existence of God altogether, then the debate becomes hostile. They will argue unreasonably and make objections in bad faith. They will refuse to recognize that the burden of proof is on them. They will be dismissive. They will not think but fight, ex post facto. Now imagine if you were forced to attend a state or state-approved school seven hours a day, more or less five days a week, and on aggregate about seven months a year. At this state school, they would teach you writing, math, and science, uh, but they would also teach you, quote, history, close quote, and the founding of the government. Would you expect the person who came out of this education to believe in the virtue and necessity of the state? Of course you would. I'm sure you could have some debates on government involvement in this or that issue and debates about the extent of government. Uh, you would have political socialists and militarists and people who had a more libertarian view of government that advocated minimal interference. But they would all agree on the necessity and virtue of government. Why no evidence of this good government or necessary government today? Well. The answer to that is that the age of miracles, the founding, has passed. Ignoring that those who proclaimed these miracles had and have everything to gain from expanding state power. The very existence of politicians is only possible if people believe in government. The more militarist and or socialist, the better. And these graduates and the graduates of the school will certainly be civil on debates about government. Uh, most will at least, and many will even stress inter-ideology relations. But as soon as you question the existence of government altogether, then the debate becomes hostile. They will argue unreasonably and make objections in bad faith. They will refuse to recognize that the burden of proof is on them. They will be dismissive. They will not think but fight ex post facto. The reason there are more atheists than anarchists is because everyone was forced into government or government approved education camps which parents are forced to pay for whether they use them or not. Self-interested teachers and professors support the state because it allows them to earn a living without providing a value, without providing value. And we know that they are not providing value because their positions are maintained by taxes which are collected at the point of a gun. This is something we all know and it's important to denormalize it. Forcing the people to pay for and send children to government education camps at the point of a gun is not okay. It is not okay. And the teachers, you know, the capricious, condescending, and unresponsive, quote, administration, close quote, may or may not have been bad. That's a matter of opinion. But the situation is definitely evil.